Welcome to the Stay Curious podcast brought to you by Alpha UK. My name's Chloe and this is Alex. This podcast is all about being open-minded, staying curious and fueling your intrigue. We're going to be hearing stories from people all across the UK and beyond. We're going to be covering big things, small things, the totally irreverent as well as the deeply theological. We hope you have fun listening along. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Stay Curious podcast. We are back again with another episode and thank you again so much for choosing to listen to the Stay Curious podcast. We've got a very good episode this week because, Chloe, you met the real Jesus. I met Jonathan Rumi, who plays Jesus on The Chosen. You have to be careful there, don't you? Because apparently some people, um, if you've not seen The Chosen, um, it's a drama about the life of Jesus told mostly through the story of the disciples. Mm. But people do often... Sing approach Jesus. him in the yeah. street literally conf- not they've like totally conflated him and jesus yeah asking him to pray for them and lots of stuff like that okay. but i have met jesus you have he's met in jesus? my heart oh, okay. but i've also met jonathan rumi yeah so. okay great we must yeah. refer to him as jonathan rumi rather than as jesus yeah but um if you missed last week's episode i also met the disciples yes you did so um i interviewed them so go back and listen to that because we explain a little bit about our partnership with the chosen and what they're a little bit about so go back and listen to that but Al before we get into this week obviously we start with your 40 before 40 40 challenges before you turn 40 coming up soon what have you done well I have been struggling recently as you know to think of good things to do before I turn 40 but one thing that regular listeners may have picked up is that I'm hugely obsessed with Formula One Um, so in terms of sports my go-to I have to clear my weekends when the F1 is on and um what I've always really, really wanted to do is to like get in the garages and meet the drivers and like have a full thing. So although this isn't completed yet, the other day, my we have we have a lodger who lives with us. Um, he's lived with us for six years and he's getting married in the summer. And he recently started working for Formula One, which I got very excited. Ideal. About. Yeah, absolutely ideal. So he goes to most of the races and um, as a gift, thanking us for having oh. him live with us for the last six years, he gave me my wife vip tickets to the barcelona grand prix no. for the whole weekend oh, friday so saturday good. sunday and he bought plane tickets to go with them as well so kind so, kind. so anyway i'm gonna the, get a lodger <laughs> anyway, one that works for formula one ideally. Yes. so anyway, on the 22nd of june which is a friday we're flying out to barcelona and then um, we're going straight to the track we've got access into the paddock and into the garages and we're going to have a tour and meet some of the drivers. Does so Liz like Formula One? Liz is a fan of Formula One. Oh, good. Mostly a fan of Drive to Survive, which is the Netflix series about Formula okay. One rather than watching it. But still, it. she'll enjoy it as well. She'll enjoy and it. And Barcelona's lovely. In I went summer, last year. Yeah. It was really nice. Yeah. Send you some restaurant ideas. Great. Oh, we have a great time. Yeah, so maybe that is like my real 40th birthday treat. Yeah. Is it a 40 before 40 challenge? I'm not uh, sure. I don't know. But we have had some advice, haven't we, on... Um, uh, some of our episodes recently so maybe what we should do is we should really work before um recording our next episode at getting me to do some maybe more difficult challenges i agree because at the moment we've just done like 17 holidays which yeah. are your 40 before 40 it's working out well for me yeah great I'm for all it. great for all well we also have a listener question question and this week is from um jemima in perth who says perth if- in australia no 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 oh Scotland. Perth. Yeah, Scotland. I thought we'd That'd done international. Cool. <laughs> yeah, right, maybe. Okay. If you're listening in Australia, send us a question. Um, if you could meet Jesus in the flesh. and ask, Which you have done. Which I have done. <laughs> and ask him any question, what would you ask? I asked him, do you want a Welsh cake? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does she mean not Jonathan Rumi? Not Jonathan Rumi. She means if Jesus were here in the flesh. I love this question. And what we ask? ask this on uh, week two mm. of the Alpha course. Yeah. So I ran Alpha last term. Um, where are we now? Uh, yeah, in the autumn, I ran um, mm. an Alpha group and we asked this question. We said, if you could walk in and meet Jesus mm. and ask him, what you, ask him one question, what would you ask? And interestingly, there were four Christians in the group and almost all of them said, I just want to know, am I doing okay? Oh. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. That's people's go-to questions. Like, yeah. is, it, am I, is am this I okay? okay? Am I doing all right? Should I tell you what I find interesting is we're running Alpha right now at our church and week one, the question is, if it turns out there was a God, what would you ask? And often with guests who wouldn't say they're Christian, sometimes that question, I've noticed, they can be a little angry. I would ask, why is there suffering? suffering? Why is there tsunamis? Why do wasps sting? That kind of question. But then week two, and I really noticed it this term, when we ask, what would you ask Jesus? It kind of shifts a little bit and people 
a less like, oh God, why would you do this? And a little more like, oh wow, I would say, oh gosh, you're real, or I was wrong. So interesting. And being presented with the person of Jesus changes mm-hmm. someone's kind of attitude to what question they would ask. I really noticed it this term. I was, I even brought it up in my alpha group. Like, didn't you know? Isn't it funny how last that. week you all said this? <laughs> Somebody described Jesus to me the other day as God with skin on. And they said, Jesus is God with skin on. Yeah. But it totally transforms our ability to relate. Yeah. Because we've also got. So, what would you ask, Al? Um, I think that it would be along the lines of um, Is there anything else I should be doing? Mm -hmm. Am I doing all right? Like, are you happy with this? (laughs) Any 40 before 40 ideas, (laughs) Jesus? Anything I could deep fry. (laughs) Yeah. It feels quite emotional to me, that does, Mm. because it's like such a. I did feel like when I became a Christian, I really did meet Jesus mm. and like it f- feels so personal. Mm. So it would be like having a best friend or a parent that you haven't seen in the flesh for so long and just yeah. wanting to be like, I probably think I'd yeah. cry. I'd probably cry. You probably I've been crying a lot recently. That's what I love about The Chosen though, that I feel like it does put flesh on the bones to the scripture that you read throughout your life or your daily walk with Jesus. And then you watch um, a story come to life and it is amazing to watch i mean i love the chosen it is totally changing my thought life around the bible though which i'm finding quite stressful yeah because it's like suddenly putting real names pictures to, yeah i yeah, know names yeah, yeah. faces yeah. yes but you went to meet yeah jonathan so Rumi. i met jonathan Rumi, and we had a really great conversation and what i loved about um chatting with jonathan Rumi is he has a real deep faith and you can he's see catholic, isn't he? he's catholic yeah. and i hope that it comes out in the interview you can see that it's real for him and um, I don't want to give any spoilers for the episode that you're, the interview you're just about to watch, but he talks about prayer and the importance of that. And when he's on set, how it's really real for him, he's actually praying as well as acting, which I think is a really interesting combination. Um, but yeah, so I hope you enjoy the interview. Yeah, can't wait to um, hear it. We're going over now to you on a, in a different studio. Yeah. Over to you, Chloe. Over to you, Chloe, from before when you interviewed Jonathan Ruby. Well, welcome, Jonathan, who Thank plays you. Jesus on The Chosen. So good to have you here and uh, chat. And we love to start off the podcast with a little bit of fun. Mm. I'm from Wales. These are some Welsh cakes. Um, They look delicious. And you've just said that you would love a bite butt to go. So I would, yeah. yeah, Otherwise, I'll be crumbly all over the place. Of course, yeah. yeah. Um, Have you had a good day? Uh, It's been a great day, yeah. I got to talk to a lot of great people and and, um, yeah, tell the story of The Chosen, season four. That's awesome. What's been your most memorable experience of season four? Uh, you know, the whole thing was, was pretty intense. I think that's been the thing that I've taken away. It's, it was an intense season, but one that's yielded a lot of, I think, what will be beautiful fruit. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's awesome. And do you have a standout moment from filming so far of all four seasons? A standout episode that you think back that you really enjoyed or oh, stand out for you? Gosh. You know, there's a, there's a number of moments, I think, for... There's a couple of really great moments in season four that I'm looking forward to audiences seeing, uh, you know, some stuff with John the Baptist and then some stuff with Lazarus. Mm -hmm. So that to me, uh, I'm excited to see how people react. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's some unexpected surprises. Yeah. Do you get to see people's reactions? Do you hear of how people have responded to the episodes? Yeah. You know, People will write messages and reach out and talk about specific uh, moments in, in the show or in the season when, when they come out. Um, people on the street, you know, if I get stopped on the street, people will talk about their favorite moments. So I get to hear a, a variety of, of answers and responses mm-hmm. about how the show has affected people personally. That must be so encouraging. It is. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. it's uh, Sometimes it's daunting because you realize that... Um, you know, God is using the show in, in such a powerful way mm-hmm. to, to touch people's hearts. Mm-hmm. So I grew up as a Christian and um, watched all the Jesus movies that there was. And I feel like The Chosen is the first thing I've seen where how you play Jesus is so fun. Mm-hmm. I feel like you are who I've um, <laughs> read in scripture that, you know, I'd never saw that before where Jesus was fun and silly and teasing the disciples. I think he had to be fun. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's the part of the human condition, part of the human experience is to, to have joy. I mean, I think Jesus was joy incarnate. I think he brought joy to, to people that maybe had never experienced joy for the majority of their lives because of their illnesses or ailments or whatever. And I think he, he took great pride in, in changing people's lives and giving them 
his joy, his lasting joy, his mm -hmm. lasting peace. And that so comes across. Awesome. awesome. And uh, the cast seems like you're really good pals and that you have fun and get on, but you're also telling a significant and important story. How do you balance the fun and silliness with something that can be serious or important? Well, I think, you know, when, when storylines are very, very heavy, you have to have an outlet at some point. Uh, and usually that for us, that I think happens in between scenes, mm -hmm. in between takes, um, just kind of carrying a little bit of levity. Um, unless, of course, you know, if it's for me, if, if it's, and for most actors, if it's a heavy scene, you tend to just stay in that until mm -hmm. the scene's done. And then once it's done, it's like, okay, mm -hmm. I can relax a little bit now and have some fun and make fun of my, my fellow actress here. Mm -hmm. So um, myself and, and Jordan Ross have a have an on-screen, off-screen rivalry, you know, that uh, that persists to, to, uh, to the joy of the two of us at the very least. I know of some people have initially, you know, he would, we would pick on each other, and initially I think fans didn't get it, and they thought we were really upset with each other, or that I couldn't stand him, and I was happy to let that persist as long <laughs> as possible. But, uh, but you know, they, then they got they got the the joke and realized that you know we. We, I love him dearly, and, and uh, uh, you know, it's it's just what we do to kind of, I think, balance the the, the occasional heaviness mm. of, of the story that we're telling. Yeah. Some of the cast earlier were telling us that about 3, 4 p.m., they all have pickle juice to kind of keep going. Oh, do yeah. you partake in the pickle juice? Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. because it it's hydrating and electrolytes, and we're oftentimes shooting in the dead of summer in the desert, and it's... 115 degrees, 112 degrees at times, and you could dehydrate pretty quickly. So uh, anything that kind of keeps your electrolytes up and minerals and salts and stuff like that. So, so it's a yeah. necessity rather than an it's enjoyment. A, it's a fun necessity. I think some people enjoy it more than others, yeah. but uh, yeah, um, I, I do uh, in, on occasion partake mm -hmm. myself. So Alpha UK is all about helping people explore more about faith and life and meaning. In what way do you think The Chosen also helps people to explore those topics? I think we detail these people's lives on screen and the faith that they had to follow Jesus as their, their savior. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the, the way in which we've portrayed their lives in such detail down to the, you know, spousal uh, 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 fits that, mm -hmm. that have some of the characters that have gone through um, and, you know, little arguments, arguments about, uh, you know, who deserves this uh, promotion and who deserves that title and uh, stuff that it's very, very human. And I think seeing that portrayed, it, to, you know, for us, we, we know what that's like. We know we know what those those issues are. Mm -hmm. And so it makes that struggle identifiable and it and thusly like okay well they had these issues they were very very flawed just like we're flawed and they still follow Jesus and Jesus was still and always will be the way the truth and life and, and so that kind of I think encourages us to 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 continue that example in our own lives mm. and you're also involved um with the Hallow app yes tell us a little bit about the importance of prayer to you Prayer is everything. It's how I prepare for this role. It's how I get up in the morning. It's what I do before I go to bed. Uh, it sustains me in some of my greatest trials and, and suffering. Um, you know, Hal has got over 10,000 prayers and meditations for everything you can possibly think of. There's mental health, there's, you know, uh, uh, life, uh, you know, um, meditations on um, birth and, and life and and um, all sorts of courses that uh, that are meant to to get people through some of the the most uh, difficult challenges mm -hmm. and some of the most joyful times in a person's life through the act of prayer mm -hmm. um, for me there's a there's a prayer on that app for instance called the surrender novena novena being a nine-day prayer um, Pentecost being the first novena, nine days prayer to the arrival of the Holy Spirit. And um, the, the surrender prayer, the surrender novena is essentially um, a prayer that I've used since I had my own deeper conversion that preceded me booking this show 
and changing my life. But it's literally one line. It's like, oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I narrate that prayer on the app and and, and hundreds of other prayers. And I think it, it really... Um, has become for so many people an opportunity to to, to just shape their day and uh, a, a spiritual discipline that has helped them um, be able to, to conquer anything that's in front of them. Mm, that's awesome. Thanks. When you're acting and you might um, pray, is that is that real for you? Is how how does prayer come into the episodes when you're acting? Oh well, yeah. Um, I mean, oftentimes there will be moments where. We're praying on film, and and to me, it's mm. I take that time to literally pray the prayer I'm praying, mm. and then in between takes, um, you know, I'll be praying just mm. just right before we start, mm. especially if it's a difficult scene or a big scene. So, um, yeah, I, th I think uh, for me, it's it's always real. Yeah, in the media, I think there's a perception that it's quite difficult to be a Christian, and. Um, you are such a humble guy. I've seen you in other interviews where people um, will ca call you Jesus or come to you for things like that, and you always point them back to God. Mm. Um, how do you balance that kind of um, celebrity culture but also being humble? I think you just have to remember who you serve, mm. you know, and who I'm portraying is who I serve mm. and uh, above above all else. And I think when I... As long as I always remember that, I, I can't go wrong, you know, because I just got to follow his lead and he, he kind of, he mapped it out for us. It is difficult. It's, you know, it is a t challenge to, to follow Jesus and, and, and to be a Christian in that way because he asks a lot from us mm -hmm. and he knows we're not perfect. He knows we're going to screw it up mm -hmm. because that's our nature. We're, we're, we have a fallen nature, but that's okay. That's, that's what grace is for and that's what, that's why he showed up. That's why he came in the first place. So, um, yeah, I, th I think it's, it, the effort is what counts, mm. you know. Uh, that's, that's what's most important is, is to follow and, and just do your best. The Chosen is commissioned for seven seasons, mm -hmm. and um, many of us know the ending. Yeah. How are you feeling about the journey to the cross and filming those scenes? Um, I'm not looking forward to it. But um, I know it's going to be beautiful, no matter how we, how it happens, no matter how Dallas films it. I know he wants to he wants to make something that is that resonates and that touches people deeply. Mm -hmm. um, it might not like as in traditional chosen fashion. It might not look like anything else that's been done. But uh, you know, I I think for right now, I have to just focus on the season that I'm in, the season that the story takes place in and um, not get too far ahead of myself because mm. if I do that then, then I'm not present in what I'm doing at the moment. Yeah. Well to finish off when you uh, take a Welsh cake to go <laughs> we've been asking everyone what's your snack of choice? Is it like a pancake? That's what everyone's been saying. No, Or it's like a squashed cakey. scone? It's, yeah, but sweeter. You don't okay. need jam and cream. It's um, okay. sweet with raisins oh. so you can look forward to it later. That's but what amazing. would be your snack of choice? You know, it's 3 p.m., you've had a busy day of filming, someone maybe hands you a coffee, and what do you go to grab with it? Probably some chocolate. Some chocolate. Yeah. I'm Any particular chocolate? Quality chocolate. Yeah. 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 European chocolate's probably some of the best. I was about to say, you enjoy in the yeah. British chocolate. Oh, yeah. 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 Dairy milk is all the way. <laughs> Twirl. <laughs> oh, good choice. Yeah. Have you tried the little twill bites? No. Oh, are they? A little bag of Cadbury Twill Bites. Interesting. Yeah. We'll get you some for next time. <laughs> I gotta find those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Jonathan, thank you so much for being with us. It's been great to chat. Thank you, likewise. Pleasure. Sure.